This video is going to walk you through how to use VassarStats.net to perform statistical analyses on the mask data from lab. So the very first thing that you should do is take the bacteriology data that we have for our course section and I want you to go to file and download that file as an Excel file. Then use Excel to perform some of your graph making and to get all the data that you need. So the Vassar Stats website is vassarstats.net and what we are wanting to do today is actually compare the different treatments for the mask experiment that you had selected. I realize that not all of your treatments were specifically done, but you want to pick the ones that are most closely related to uh, what you wanted to explore. So for the purposes of this analysis, I'm actually going to explore the difference between no mask, two-ply cotton mask, and a three-ply cotton mask. So with the statistics, you will notice that there are many, many different tests that are listed on the left-hand side, and you are most familiar with chi-square testing at this point in time. However, we cannot use chi-square testing for this particular analysis because our results are actually numerical instead of being categorical. And what we are looking for is we want to compare the means between our treatments or between our groups and the variance around them to see if there is a statistical difference between the groups. So because I want to do a no mask experiment as my control and I want to do two ply cloth mask and then a three ply cloth mask, I am going to select that data to put it into a standard area for me to utilize. And our three ply was zero and our two ply had a little bit of growth. And I'm actually wanting to compare the values between these three groups. Now, if you remember from when we did our inferential statistics lab at the beginning of the semester, we also mentioned something called a t-test. Now what a t-test does is if you only had two groups or two treatments that you wanted to compare the means between, you would run a t-test. But if we were doing a side-by-side -side comparison for that, you would have to run no mask versus two ply, no mask versus three ply, and then two ply versus three ply. So you would have to run multiple t-tests. What we are going to actually utilize is something called an ANOVA, and an ANOVA I'm going to choose that option from the left hand bar in the Vassar Stats window so you can get a little bit of an idea of what it's for. But ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance, and this allows you to compare two or more different groups to one another and to see if they're um, significantly different or not as far as their means based on their variance. So we are going to use a one-way ANOVA, and this is because we only have one independent variable that was manipulated between each of the groups, so we're only looking at one thing, um, the type of mask, essentially. And I would highly recommend reading through the procedure so you get an idea of how this test works for this program. Um, but I'm going to scroll down to where you actually can start to enter your data, and I'm going to focus on the setup. So the number of samples in your analysis would indicate how many groups you're comparing. So we have no mask, two ply, and three ply. So I'm going to choose three samples. If you wanted to compare another type of masking, you would just change this to four. This program will only let you do five different treatments at one point in time. And then our samples are independent samples. And notice that as soon as I select independent samples, those three columns down in the data entry point turn yellow, which means I can enter data in here, but I cannot do it in sample four and five. And then you will notice that down here, it says unweighted versus weighted. It, the program tells you that unless you have a good reason to choose them unweighted, you should do weighted. And that is already the default setting for the setup. So, for the data, 
you can enter this by hand, which would be the 860, 744, so on and so forth. Or you can copy that data and you can paste that data directly into your sample column and it'll separate it out based on the cells in Microsoft Excel. And then you can do the same thing for your two ply and you can do the same thing for three ply. And then all we have to do is choose calculate. Now you will notice that there is a data summary table and an ANOVA summary. The data summary table you are actually going to utilize for obtaining your mean values and your standard error values. You need these to be able to create your graph. And I actually just noticed that my sample two data is identical to my sample one data, which means I did not copy and paste these things properly. So I'm going to re-highlight my two ply data and I'm going to reset my scenarios. I'm going to recopy all the data in here. I should have just done it for the single one, but I'm going to hit calculate. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to take my headers and I'm going to start another row of them. And then I'm going to type mean and standard error. And then I'm just going to transfer this information from the data summary, which is 723, 1.5 and zero. And then my standard error, you'll notice that it gives you a lot more significant figures than you truly need. Um, our bacteria our bacterial colonies, you really can't have a fraction of a colony, but we will go to the 10th position because that is gener generally as accurate as we can be. So 66.7 is gonna be first one, and then we're gonna do 0.9 for our second, and then zero for our third. Then the next bit of information you need is from the ANOVA summary table. And the ANOVA summary table gives you an F statistic. And the F statistic is actually the statistical value that you get from running an ANOVA. And an ANOVA actually compares um, the variance within a group and the variance between the groups. So your degrees of freedom, you actually get two values for them. The first one is the number of treatments you have minus one, so that would be two. And then you just separate the next value with a comma, and that degrees of freedom is nine, and that is if you are actually looking at the number of uh, samples or replicates you have within a sample minus one. So nine would be three plus three plus three. So that's where the nine comes into play. You have to report both the F statistic and the degrees of freedom whenever you discuss your statistics in a result section of a paper. Um, and our p-value is less than 0 0.001. So our results are, there's an extreme significance between our treatments. Now, that value, we've, we're able to determine based on the F statistic and the degrees of freedom. So again, you have to report all three of those things when you report your statistics. But the thing is, if we look at our mean values, we don't know if the significance was specifically from the no mask in comparison to the rest of them because of how much larger it is than the rest. But there is something called a post hoc Tukey test that has been done for you. And this particular test actually does a um, comparison from one sample to the next sample. So our M1 value would be our no mask, our M2 value is our two pi, and our M3 is three pi. So what this actually tells me is that there's a significant difference between no masking and a two ply mask meaning that there is significantly less bacteria on your two-ply mask. 
And then with the no mask versus the three ply, there is also a significant difference in having way less bacteria when you're wearing a three ply mask. Then it does a comparison between the two mask types, two ply versus three ply, and it indicates that it's not significant. So there is actually no statistical difference between the two layer and the three layer cotton masks. So what do you do with this data? How do you actually graph it? This is something that you'll end up having to do for your report, and that's why we've started to input all of this data already. So the first thing that I'm going to do is make my bar graph, which is the mean comparison of colonies between our three treatments or groups. I'm going to highlight that data and I'm going to go to insert. And at this point in time, making graphs should be all of the hat for you, but I'm going to show you a couple new features that you need to work on. So I'm going to make my graph bigger and I'm going to add in some chart elements so that way I can have a primary horizontal axis and a vertical axis label. And then I'm going to delete that title because scientific graphs report the title below the figure. I'm also going to go to the home menu and I'm going to increase my font size to about 18 so everything's easily seen. And then you want to adjust your axis labels. Um, so this is our mean uh, bacterial colonies. And then our x-axis is going to be our type of face covering. And then the next thing that you want to do with this is you want to add those error bars into your figure. So since this is only one set of data that we're comparing, you're only going to have to do this once. You want to select the blue bar that you can easily click, do add chart element, add your error bars, but do the more options. And I want to do both directions, I want the caps. I do not want fixed values, I wanna do custom, and I'm going to choose the standard error values I copied into here from the Vassar Stats program, and I want that to be above and below, so I hit okay, and you'll notice that we have a tiny little bar here for the two ply. The three ply, there was no bacterial growth on average, which means there is no standard error for it. So that makes sense why that would look that way. Then the next thing that we have to do, which is a, something you have not done before, is you want to add the level of significance for the bacterial growth to indicate which treatments are actually significantly different from one another. And we do that by adding letter notations into your figure. So I'm going to go to my home page and I don't see the insert option for it. So I'm going to go to the actual insert toolbar and you'll see some option that lets you insert text. And I want to do a text box. And this is where the two key test actually comes into play, that post hoc test I was explaining. So above the no mask bar, I'm going to add a text box. And because this is the highest bar that I have, I'm going to indicate that this is A. And again, I'm going to increase that font size so it's easy to see. And that indicates that anything that shares this letter would be statistically the same. Now, if you recall, when we compare the no mask to the two ply mask, so this M1 versus M2, it was significantly different. It was significantly a p-value of less than 0 0.01. So these two columns need to have different letters. So I'm going to copy my text box and I'm going to paste it and I'm going to, going to drag that text box above the two-ply data and I'm going to change that letter to a b. And that indicates that there is a statistical difference between A and B. 
and then I'm going to look at the rest of the data I have here. So there is a statistical difference between no mask and the three ply mask, but if I look at the next row, it tells me that my two ply mask and my three ply mask did not have a significant difference to it. So these two need to share a letter. So I'm going to copy this letter again, and I'm going to paste this over my three ply, ply column. And then when you go to actually type your figure caption, you would indicate what these letters are telling you as well as what the error bars are telling you. So for inserting this into a report, you would copy your figure, open up a Word document, and you are going to paste special. And the reason I always recommend pasting special is because you want to paste this as a picture to retain formatting. And there is one thing I forgot to do before I get to this point, is that we want to change our figure to being a black and white figure, which is more scientifically relevant. So you go to chart design, change your colors to monochromatic and choose the black and gray options. And then you will copy it, go to your Word document, paste it as a figure. Um, I typically do a PDF if that's an option. If it's not, choose something else that indicates it's a picture. Then below your figure, don't forget to include the caption where you need a figure number, you need a brief informative title, you need a brief procedural description, and you need um, information regarding special features which would include things like the error bars and the levels of significance. And then you want to bold your figure number and your figure title, which is recommended based on our Hoffman guide. And that's all you have to do for the graph. Now in the written results, I'm going to actually title this results so we know it's different. You want to make a statement about the significance of your results. So for this particular one, we would say that um, type of figure, you know, try to state it so that way it reflects the data more accurately. Um, wearing at least a two-ply cloth mask results in a significantly reduced amount of bacterial transmission. And then in parentheses, you would put your F statistic and then do a semicolon and your degrees of freedom, and then your p-value, close your parentheses, and then add a period. Now, your statements are going to vary depending on your actual experiment, as will your graph, but this should give you the basics. Please remember to pay attention to your specific instructor's additional instructions and if you have any questions, reach out to your instructor directly. Thank you.